All right, so where are we? What's this place? So we are on the side of Katsuragawa, one of the two beautiful rivers in Kyoto City. I wanted to show you this spot because there is like a, a metal bridge and the reverb that you get when recording this bridge and hitting it with this object and different stuff, different material, is just fantastic. Under the bridge there is a huge reverb and then like if you use that with the granular synthesizers it's like fucking awesome. So in this upcoming album I'm mostly using field recording and synthesizers to produce every sound. I started to play guitar when I was five years old and I started to DJ when I was 17. I never had turntable at home so I basically learned like the hard way in front of people you know so I apologize for the first people who listened to my DJ set because I'm pretty sure it was horrible and very soon I had the opportunity to live like musical experiences that influenced the way I do music and influenced me like to actually start doing my own music because I I wanted to do the same that these people behind the speaker were doing. Be the one playing the music, you know, and playing with the people in front of the speaker. I think I was inspired by an amazing musician that is still one of my main influences, uh, 69 dB from the Spiral Tribe. I love his music so much that I, I really wanted, it gives me like the craziness enough, you know, to try you know there is like different genre and different style in the same album but what connects for me every tracks of the album is like i try to be personal as much as i could in the composition of these tracks and by personal what i mean is like maybe that's the only thing that i can do because i remove everything else and in the end the only thing that remains it's just my heart or like my feelings and that's also why I called it Made in Kyoto because for me it's the emotion and the life experiences you know the success the failure you know the happiness the sadness the difficulty how you need to not give up in these times and like rise again that's all the feelings that I hope I'm transmitting in the different tracks of the album. Being personal, it also means that you made zero conversation with yourself, you know, when you were editing or choosing which tracks should remain or be on the album. It's always completely like abstract when people are talking about that. When I'm like watching this kind of interview on YouTube of other musicians and when they are saying that, Lots of the time I was a bit like lost of word, you know, what, what do they really mean about that? To understand what it means, you know, you need to go through the process. For example, when you are in front of a painting, there is always an intellectual process. You need to know the context, you need to know maybe the techniques, you know. It's always like a reference to something, a historical movement or this kind of stuff. 
but music has a physicality to it that even before you start to process it with your own knowledge and experiences, you're feeling it very, very, very fast that you have an opinion of, do you like this sound? Do you like these tones? Do you like these tunes? Do you like these textures? And because it's almost like instinctive, it's a very long process to dig into yourself to know what makes me react and what makes this song something that you like and that can represent your own feelings. So it's a long process and not an easy one, you know, because there's no, there's no easy way and there's not quick steps you know to learn about yourself but then like doing it doing every day again and again start from anywhere but don't give up you know you can start with pads you can start with drum sections a uh, sample that you like you know and build something around you know and if, you, if it's not working try something else you know and sometimes try something stupid surprise yourself not to get into the habit of repetition. The first time I knew I'm probably going to make music all my life it was uh, during a live performance I did in an um, underground techno party. A lot of things happened that night and I started to play actually just before uh, the sunrise and uh, nothing is written. You prepare kicks, you prepare like uh, MIDI sequences that you're sending to your synthesizers but then you can change so many parameters at the same time. So basically you're creating the music in live. When everything goes together, you enter like kind of a zone. Sport people can actually experience this when they, they are in the zone, you know. And I think musicians completely go really far away sometimes, you know. And you're not even really thinking about like you're manipulating an instrument. You're just like expressing yourself and you're connecting with people on the other side of the speaker. You're just like together. That's a unique experience, being on stage in front of, of people, you know, like, and like vibing on your music. It's, it's just amazing. And then I call that the moment you fall in love with music again. So I'm going to play one of the tracks of, uh, of the album and I'm going to actually try to perform it in um, a live setting. So that's the way I would actually use my setup to play in a club or a live house or, or a festival. A structure that is played by Ableton Live. I have like several parts in the live sets that are played by the modular and I'm also injecting the sound from Ableton and from the MPC Live into the effects of the modular. Here you have like the effect sections. Here is like modulations and envelopes. And here you have like what it is like uh, sound so sources, uh, oscillators. So you have one oscillator, two oscillators, one complex oscillators and another oscillator here. So all the cats around the house are running away because like they can hear what's going on now and we cannot anymore. Sana kanji desu.